Huge gains and big losses, that's in short what leverage trading can do for you. My name is Rick Richardson and in this video I'm going to explain to you what leverage trading is. Trading is the buying and selling of goods or services with a compensation being paid by the buyer to the seller. And the international trade goes back as far as ancient times with the most famous one in Dutch history being the Dutch East India Company. This was a multinational corporation that was founded by rivaling Dutch trading companies in the early 17th century. They believe it was the biggest company to have ever existed in history. It was established to trade with Mughal India with 50% of the trade being textile and 80% of the trade being silk. And it also traded with Indianized Southeast Asian countries when the Dutch government granted it a 21 year monopoly on the Dutch spice trade. Later it would diversify into multiple commercial and industrial activities like international trade, shipbuilding and the trade of spices, coffee and many other products. However, we're not here to talk about a business trade. We are here to talk about trading stocks and crypto. There are many stocks and crypto to choose from, but they all have things in common. Stocks can be bought individually or as a call or put option. If you buy a call option, you expect the price of the stock to go up. If you buy a put option, you expect the price of the stock to go down. The call and put options both have end dates and gives you the right but not the requirement to buy a stock for a specific price at a specific date. A call option has a buyer and a seller and the call buyer will pay a premium to the call seller. Now stocks can be kept indefinitely but options cannot. Those will run out of time and either be worth some money or nothing at all. So in short, Call and put options have three distinct features. These are a strike price, which is the price at which the buyer can purchase the underlying stock, a premium, which is the price for the option, and then finally an expiration date, which tells when the option is expired and is settled. So how does this work in crypto? Well, in crypto, you have several options when it comes to trading. Let's use SAM as an example, which will first purchase a specific asset, an example, BNB or Solana. When the asset SAM has purchased is worth $100 and then moves up to 110, SAM has gained $10. But if it drops to $90, SAM has lost $10, provided he sells, of course. If SAM decided to keep the asset, then all he has is a paper profit or a paper loss. Another way how to trade crypto assets is by using a leverage. Leverage trading allows SAM as a trader to increase his exposure by paying less than the full amount for the asset. If Sam uses a buy order, he expects the price to go up, which is called a long position. And if he uses a sell order, he expects the price to go down, which is called a short. Now you might have heard from the terms bulls and bears. Well, if you're a bull, you expect the price to go up and you have to take a long position. If you're a bear, you expect the market to go down and you have to take a sell position. The first thing you need to know is that leverage trading works with percentages. Now let me give you an example. Sam thinks that the market is going back up again, things are calming down and he read some great news on stores being able to accept crypto payments in their fiat accounts with banks. So he expects Bitcoin to go up from $40,000 to $44,000. And Sam decided to take a long position with $400 in total with a leverage of 10 and many exchanges offer different options like 2 to 10x, but for this example, let's just keep it simple. Now, let's say Sam is right and the price of Bitcoin moves to a price of 44,000. This is an increase of 10% in price, but because Sam has used a leverage of 10x, he basically took a position with $4,000, which means that he has now gained a profit of $4,000. So, why isn't everybody using this? Now, let's say Sam was wrong and the news he read was an April Fool's joke. Bitcoin isn't pumping 10%, but instead it drops 10% to a price of $36,000. Because Sam was using leverage, the 10% loss is now 100% loss of funds. Which means that he gets liquidated and loses the entire sum of $400. Now, if Sam would have gotten into a short position rather than a long one, things would have been different for him. Now, Sam knew it was an April Fool's joke and expected the market to go down when the news came out that we're far away from accepting Bitcoin as a legal payment method for all stores. Instead of going long, he decided to go short and use the same leverage. He now fills in a sell order at $40,000 with the same leverage of 10x. So if the price drops to $36,000, that's 10%. His $400 has turned into $4,000 as well. However, if for whatever reason the price went up, 
the same principle will apply. Sam will get liquidated and lose all of its funds as soon as the price went up by 10%. And now that you've got an understanding on long and short positions, I want to let you all know how you can protect yourself from being liquidated. Being forcefully liquidated will convert your crypto assets into cash or cash equivalents to pay off your debt. This happens when you cannot fulfill the margin requirement for your leverage position. It's something I had happened in the past and trust me, it's not fun when that happens because once the funds are lost, you cannot get them back. And this is different from buying crypto assets in a regular way. If you purchase Solana at $100 and it drops 10% to 90, you can still take out that $90 and walk away with a $10 loss. So how you can counteract this is by using a stop loss or a take profit. Let's look at Sam again and his great insights in the market. He isn't quite convinced yet, but he wants to take the gamble anyways, because that's what you're doing, gambling. So he puts the $400 in a long position with a 10x leverage. However, he wants to exit the position if things don't go as planned. So he puts a stop loss order at $38,000. This means that if the price drops by 5%, the order will be executed and his position will be liquidated. But unlike in the previous example, in this case, he's only losing 50% of his funds. So instead of losing $400, he only loses $200, which leaves him with the other $200 that he can either use for a new position or keep in his pocket because there is no way he will use margin trading. Again, the same principle applies with a take profit order. In this case, he's satisfied with a 50% increase in profit. So he takes a long position and then fills in a take profit or at $42,000. And once Bitcoin hits this price, his order will go through giving him a profit of $2,000. And this is the most easiest way how Sam can protect himself from losing his funds. However, let's say Sam is a true gambler and things aren't exciting enough for him just yet. He won't let himself get squeezed out of a position. Whether it's a long one or a short one, Sam is here to stay in his portfolio and trades are built to loss. So he decides to use collateral funds. Sam has an account with $4,000, but he's only trading with $400. He could use all of the $4,000 at once, but he's a seasonal trader and knows how to do proper risk management. At least that's what he likes to think, because rather than using the entire amount for one long or short position, Sam decided to use the other $3,600 as collateral. On exchanges like Kraken, you can margin trade, which is another word for leverage trading, with collateral. The higher percentage you use, the quicker you will get liquidated when the market goes the wrong way for you. By using his collateral, he won't get liquidated when the price of Bitcoin drops to $36,000, which is $40,000 minus a 10%. Instead, he can hold this position because he has another $3,600 that he can use and has placed as collateral. And as soon as a certain threshold is reached, his position will be liquidated. But the difference is that it will take much longer than he would have just leverage traded with $400. Most exchanges use a threshold of like 80% before you get a warning to either deposit more collateral or to exit your position manually. The pro of this is that Sam won't get squeezed out of his position so easily. Bulls are fighting bears every day trying to liquidate each other's position. And this is also one of the reasons that when the price of Bitcoin drops very badly, you suddenly see it drop even more. This has to do with the fact that long positions are being liquidated when the market drops. And on the other hand, sometimes you see a tremendous boost in price with Bitcoin and this can be the effect of a short squeeze which pushes bears out of their position. So during events like this, using collateral will help Sam stay in his position to survive these market circumstances. However, eventually Sam will have to pay up and that's the biggest con. If Sam can't keep up because he doesn't have any more collateral to use or because he lost faith in the market and decides to cut his losses and close his position, he will have a much bigger loss than when he would have just used the $400 trade on a 10x leverage without collateral. So in summary, there are many ways how you can trade stocks and crypto and you can use leverage or buy the set asset. It all depends on your risk appetite and how much you're willing to lose because no matter how many stories you read online or YouTube videos you watch from people that claim to have become millionaires, the majority of the people are losing money when using leverage trading. Now keep in mind, I'm not a registered financial advisor, nor is this video meant as financial advice. It's meant to be 
educational and entertaining only on the topic of leverage trading. A special thanks to Alexios for providing me with the inspiration to make this video. If you want something to be addressed on my YouTube channel or on my website, feel free to contact me. And if you like visual presentations about crypto projects, then please click that playlist right there. My name is Rick Ridgen and I'll see you next time. Doei!